What is the motive of your visit to Seattle? The motive of the visit is to ask for support here in the United States for the people to support us, all the people that are listening to us, seeing us. We need their support so that they help us to protest here. Send letters to your congressmen to stop the Merida plan. We don't want that anymore. We don't want weapons. We want schools. Nearly six months have passed since the disappearance of your family members and in, up until now the Mexican authorities have given different hypotheses. What have you all responded? What is your position? Our position is that it's a state crime. Many levels of government participated. Federal police, municipal police, um, the, even the army. They want us to believe that cartels were involved and that we as students at Ayotzinapa belong to a cartel. But that's the way that they want to wash their hands of it. We know how organized crime works there. We see it every day. They don't try to disappear people. The most that they'll do is to put them in a clandestine grave. The only group interested in people not knowing about their crimes is the state. And in the dirty war in the 60s and 70s in Guerrero, they disappeared a lot of farmers, of workers who were protesting. And they're doing it again. We've come here to ask the people to support us on this side. Pressure the United States government so that they, in turn, will pressure the Mexican government to investigate Ayotzinapa and give the students back alive because they took them alive. Abarca and his wife are still under watch, but the authorities, have they told you what the government position is in terms of the mayor and his wife? What is your position? The mayor and his wife are in prison, but they are being processed for crimes related to organized crime, a murder on part of the mayor, but they are not being accused of the disappearance of our classmates. They are being punished for different crimes, but not for the disappearance of the students, because they don't want it to appear to be a state crime. They want it to look like organized crime. But the witnesses all testify to the fact that it was the government that participated. Uh, for the government, the case is closed, basing, only basing themselves on the testimony of three supposed authors of the crime. But the scientific evidence shows um, everything to the contrary. The Argentinian investigators that are working on the case have done forensic investigations that show that. Do you reject that version of the government that the remains that were found are belong to the students? Yes, because there's not any proof to the con that they are them. All that they've shown us has been lies. They've tried to deceive us, but they're not going to. We already did DNA testing and none came out positive. The government has, during the last months, uh, tried to show that it's a conflictive zone because of the planting of drugs. And that that's one of the problems that is in, in that area and that's part of this issue. And that they were members of a, and that they were the student, the students at the school were part of this problem. What do you say? Uh, me, as a student at the Ayotinapa school, I can say the following. The government wants to link us to the cartel, the Reds, which is an opposing gang to Guerreros Unidos there in Guerrero. 
But we don't belong to any cartel. We are students. They have stigmatized us a lot, calling us vandals, rebels, now even narco traffickers. But we're students like any other. Simply, we, due to the rural conditions where we live, are obligated to go out to the streets to protest, to demand the betterment of our school. Ayotzinapa, where we live. We've never belonged to any cartel. We are simply students that have a social conscience. And they want to make us appear as if we're a part of this cartel, make it look like a turf battle, and that way they can wash their hands of the state crime that they committed. Can you emphasize a little bit how we can support somehow because I had not seen before other groups that due to this kind of genocides that happen in Mexico come out of the country to, to other countries in caravans and bring their voice abroad. So how can we make what you're doing here really be worth it? How can we support you? How can the media and the people support. First of all, telling the truth, what is really happening in Mexico, because the television duopoly there in Guerrero airbrushes the reality that's occurring in Mexico. Unfortunately, due to the narco government in Mexico and the big business there, they are manipulating and looting our country, disenfranchising the Mexican people. So this is how you can help us, telling the reality, the truth about what's happening in Mexico, and demanding, sending letters to the United States government so that they stop sponsoring the Merida plan, because with those resources, all of the um, forces of order in Mexico are given weapons, supposedly to protect the people. They swore to protect the people, but what they're doing is repressing people in every demonstration, in every protest that we have demanding justice. As parents of these young disappeared men, what are your feelings? What would you like people to know about the disappearance of your children? First of all, with the support of all of you, we demand that our children return alive. We demand also that they stop sending money to Mexico so that they stop buying weapons there to repress us, the Mexicans there. That's what they use the money for that's sent from here, from Plan Merida. That's what we want, that that it be suspended, that that be halted, so that they stop disappearing people. Is there some way in which you are collecting facts, information, evidence, that this plan is really damaging the Mexican people? Because if you could really demonstrate, I think, um, to the legislators of this country, um, if you could really demonstrate what you're saying about this plan, I think you could really achieve something um, with evidence. Are you collecting uh, evidence, statistics, research? Look, we living in the state of Guerrero every day, living through them killing your friends, seeing how they kill farmers who fight, seeing all the atrocities the police commit, simply living in, Me in Mexico. Those of us who live there know what happens, know that the police don't protect people. The Merida plan, from what I understand, was created to combat or drug trafficking there when Felipe Calderón was president. Unfortunately, yes, there are more police, there are more weapons, but they don't use them to combat drug trafficking. They use them to kill, repress, disappear, anybody who raises their voice, any dissident, anybody who fights for their rights, from farmers to students to workers.
That's what happens in Mexico. We are sometimes more afraid of the police than organized crime itself. And yes, there is also written evidence and that is something that the legal aspect of the movement is seeing to our lawyers from Platinolan. They're bringing this before the Inter-American Court, the UN, Amnesty International, and we are also looking into going to The Hague. How many cities do you plan to visit here in the U.S.? 43. Do you have a date to visit the Capitol in Washington, D.C.? Uh, one group already went. If there are no other questions, we invite the people to the activities that we are going to carry out here in Seattle. On the official website of Caravan 43, it's caravana43.com, you can find the three different routes and the activities that we'll be doing. Que mañana a la una en el consulado, don? Que digan que mañana una protesta en el consulado a la una. Que salgan a la marcha la gente. Hasta que aparezcan nuestros compañeros. Until our classmates appear and until justice is done for the three who were killed that night, that the, those who are guilty be punished, both the material and the intellectual authors. An invitation to a protest tomorrow in the consulate, the Mexican consulate. We invite you to be there with us at 1 o'clock.